Welcome to Lagging Out. Here are your hosts, Funny Guy, Chieftain, and Zombie Killer. We are live. Uh, welcome to Lagging Out, the web's best podcast about video games, comic books, science fiction, all things nerd that you aren't watching. I'm your host, Funny Guy. I'm here with the Chieftain and Zombie Killer tonight. Our main sponsor, been with us since day one, want to give a shout out to them, Gamer Gloves. Uh, go to thegamergloves.com, get some Gamer Gloves. FUOnPosingIt.com, the only social media outlet where you can post whatever you want without censorship. Check out FUOnPosingIt.com. Yeah, they support all gamers on all platforms. You can like their page at Fierce Gaming Females or their group page at Fierce Gaming Females. Hot chicks with sticks. Did you just say that? Did you just I say did. that? And did you just say that as monotone? As you, you gotta say it. Give me some, <laughs> I love the inflection in her voice. You gotta say it like a like a Ashley Madison ad. You gotta be like hot oh, chicks with sticks. <laughs> try it. Is that enough to try not to laugh. One more time. One try more time. It. Right, come on. Hot chicks with sticks. No, 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 no. There I want you. Go. Go. I want, I want, I want. Hot chicks with sticks. I'm sorry, my voice isn't as deep as yours. It doesn't have to be deep. I want that as a hot chicks with sticks. <laughs> <laughs> no. Come on. Yeah, what do you mean no? Come on. No. <laughs> Come on. Come on. No. Come you did it way better. Hey, fellas. Hey, fellas. It's Fierce Gaming Females. This is a zombie killer. Come on, man, really. Oh, oh, hot chicks with sticks, baby. Anyway. This is brought to you by Fierce Gaming Females. They support all gamers on all platforms. And if you like their Facebook page at Fierce Gaming Females. Get some sex into it, man. Or their group page. You're reading, it, you're reading it like that kid in third grade. Hot like, like, chicks with sticks. With Wally. <laughs> Sounded like Wally when she read that. They support all gamers on all platforms. Neep, nope, nope. <laughs> hey, if you're enjoying our show, check out our fan page on Facebook. It's Lagging Out. Uh, Facebook.com slash Lagging Out. You can also follow us on Twitter, at Lagging Out. Instagram, at Lagging Out. And if you want to catch past episodes of our show, Go to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash, guess what, lagging out. We have so okay. we've got a new topic tonight. Tonight's topic is the dark side of gaming. And we wanted to do something that other podcasts don't has, have the testicular fortitude to do, is actually talk about the non-shiny parts of the gaming industry. Um, this is going to be a two-part series. The first part we're going to talk about is Evolve and uh, Call of Duty Extinction and the similarities between them both and how the gaming industry the gaming industry is going in that aspect of first-person shooters. Um, with that being said, uh, between Evolve and Call of Duty um, Extinction primarily. Uh, both games are set in futuristic realities as well a four-person squad-based combat. Both feature roles where players select what class they would like to play as. It's different roles or offer different perks as a whole. Both titles have a sci-fi design. Um, basically, it looks like the, the gaming and first-person shooters are getting away from, well, if you're thinking about Evolve and... and uh, Call of Duty, which are first-person shooters, but it looks like, to me, Zombie, that they're afraid to take any risks anymore. Everyone's going to this futuristic guns, and it's kind of pissing off some of the first-person shooter people that want to play something that's more realistic. The hardcore Call of Duty um, Battlefield people, um, from, I, from who I've talked to, are pretty... Uh, Concerned about the way the Call of Duty franchise is going. Yeah, um, I mean, they're I going a different are, way. I think there are places out there that are going to take uh, a chance, I guess. Because it is a risky maneuver, you know, to move away. You know, it's hard to, tr you know, 
I'm kind of curious. How do you translate an engine like uh, like the Dice Two engine, uh, the the Frost? Is it the Frostbite engine? Is what it's called? Yeah. Um, how do you Frostbite Two? How do you take that, which was primarily designed for a uh, 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 modern combat war system, if you will, of play? Right. How do you take that same thing and make it cops and robbers, but by still maintaining that? all-out kind of war feeling. And I'm curious to see how that translates. However, you make a good point, but we were actually kind of talking about the sci-fi, um, going towards the sci-fi section of it, but I can understand what you're saying with uh, Battlefield going to cops and robbers sort of thing. They're kind of changing their stuff. They're actually taking more risks. I think that's the point you're going for here. Um, but as far as them trying to go a safe way because they think they're thinking that people want more futuristic weapons I think our um, writer actually was talking about um, certain things like death machine century guns and Krakens um, which are pretty much a ripoff of another game um, they're afraid to take risks and lose their fan base for some reason but at the same time I personally think that it's not they, they're not even appealing to the fan base anymore and I'm completely convinced that they do not care what you want as a person, zombie. Uh, as you, as a buyer, we, we play a lot of COD together, right? Yep. And we, the expansion pack, um, you buy that, and we usually buy the expansion pack. That's 50 bucks right there. It's 60 bucks you buy in the base game. But if you're buying everything all together, it's 230 bucks for one game. Not much yeah. has changed from Call of Duty 1 to now as far as Infinity Ward is concerned. They're so afraid to make any movements, getting rid of tubes, get rid of um, grenade launches, and that sort of thing. The only thing people, they let, they're, they're starting to think, is like, oh, people want more futuristic weapons. No, we don't want overpowered weapons. We want good gameplay. I'm quite yeah, we frankly... Want the tough fix. We, we want the problems fixed with what you already have. Right. And not, quite frankly, you, know, let's, you know, come up with something completely new. Um, right. That's, that's great and all, but there's still a lot of improvement that they need to do on what they already have and what and they've the, had for years. Right. And they have WNFs because we have sources and insiders that actually worked on the game and worked on other games. There are things that they are absolutely arrogant about. Now I'm just going to call it they're being arrogant about it. They will not fix the spawn systems. If they look at battlefields, their frostbite engine, their spawn, their spawning, you can when you die. I don't know if you ever played. Have you ever played Battlefield before? I have a little bit, not not as much as the Call of Duty, but I have can, um, on the PlayStation. You can spawn where your friends are. You don't spawn in front yeah, of your I enemies. Yeah, you play. Yeah, a lot. and that makes sense. A spawn system in Battlefield off that works. Annoying circle and push your camera. Uh, that's so we don't lag. <sighs> I'm doing that so we don't lag. They're not gonna lag. Nobody lag. needs to see me. We're we're yeah. Well, I will. When you guys are going back and forth. If you want to take battlefield, the spawn system works as you, at least in Rush, and I'm pretty confident it's the same in most of the other game types. You have a home base that your team is playing from that you can spawn on. You can spawn on certain vehicles, or you can spawn on your squad leader. Your squad leader can spawn on anybody in the squad, but only you can spawn on your squad leader. So you can't spawn on other players in your squad. It's a controlled spawn system. In other words, you get right. to kind of pick where you're going to pop right. in. Right, and we've talked about this before. I think we're rehashing old stuff. But as far as that's concerned, it, I think the reason why they're going to, through a sci-fi path is because they actually have, you know, they have data from from Bungie and from uh, 343 with Halos 1 through 4. ODST and Reach I won't mention because they weren't as successful. But there is a huge following for that in Activision and uh, who's working on a new warfare game, COD uh, Advanced Warfare. Raven Software, I think, is on with that. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm sure I'm going to get letters for it. But they, they want to go towards that path, and that's fine if they want to do that. And that's If they want to like a total abandon their, their core fans, that's their own prerogative. They're making a billion dollars. I'm not going to tell them how to do it. But I think it's bullshit that they're, they're taking a shortcut with, with stuff and not taking risks like they did in the beginning of the games. Well, you it's know? like a bandwagon thing. Everybody else is doing this, so right. we need to do it too. There is no selection in first-person shooters. It's actually, it's getting less, and quite frankly, I'm getting pissed about it. And well, I, I think what you're also kind of trying to say is like, you know, and I tend to agree, like a lot of people... Talk, oh, me, off the, talk me off like, the ledge there, funny uh, guy. Like, like, well, the World War II <laughs> genre, a lot of people in the industry might say that it's dead. 
And it's right. not it, it's not that if it's in the hands of the right kind of developer. Um, you know, Vietnam, that's a storyline, that's dead. You know, the Pacific Theater of World War II, that's dead. And I don't believe that. I think that, um, you know, there's plenty of companies out there with plenty of good engines that could make a, you know, you know bring that genre back. I understand you're saying you want more conventional war. And that most yeah. games that are coming out are going towards towards futuristic type of weaponry. And granted, let's be realistic that most of the, even in the early Call of Duty World War II games, there was still some sort of unrealistic stuff. But nonetheless, I get what you're saying. In other words, let's go back to our roots in a sense. Well, Not that and it's fine to have these kinds of world. games, but why does it have to be every single game that's coming now is, you know, going this way? It used to be World War II, World War II stuff, World War II stuff. It used like remember Zombie, it was like World War like the first four the first four Call of Duties were all World War II stuff, then they went they expanded and went to Vietnam and now it's like they they ran out of a storyline. And see not to be a not to be a battlefield fanboy, but I'll be a battlefield fanboy for a second. Yeah, just take the other side just for argument's sake. Uh you know, I'll be honest with you, okay, you've got the current Battlefield Four, which is uh, I guess you could say fairly, um, fairly. I would say set in the real world in terms of the weapons that you use for the most part. Maybe <coughs> some of the weaponry might be 10, 20 years in the future, but for the most part, it's it's you know you're using stuff that's that's out there today. The one thing they did, which I think they did very well with their download packs, when you get the game, you have this whole new set of maps that have these all new dynamic buildings collapse, and you can blow up things and have def you know, uh, present your team with a better defensive position. Right. Uh, they're all kind of built into the maps, and either side can can sort of do these uh, to a point. Is and I think I think I think Battlefield did the 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 smart thing here. With their download packs, they have a map pack called China Rising, which if you play it and you've played the earlier Battlefields, Battlefield Vietnam, etc., it has a very Battlefield Vietnam feeling, yet you're still playing Battlefield 4. Then they have another map pack that they put out that's Naval Battles. And when you play that, if you, to be quite honest, I got the Battlefield 1941 kind of feeling where I'm fighting over uh, in, the, you know, in the South Pacific over islands and mountains and stuff like that. So uh, I think they've done a good job of kind of trying to translate some of that feel into a modern game, and I'm hoping maybe we'll see some more of that. Yeah, like to have, have a different genre of that. But it doesn't look like they're going that way. Well, maybe Battlefield is, but uh, like you said, they're doing more of a cops and robbers type of thing. But, I mean, it, it, it's like what's the difference between all, all the like Activision, Respawn, and Bungie? It's like they're all doing the same stuff. They're not going to work together, obviously, but, you know, it's not, it's it's the same but different. Like, Battlefield and Call of Duty are the same, but they're different. Well, in a sense, it's sort of a Hollywood mentality. I mean, look at look at television shows and look at movies. I mean, I'm trying to think of good examples here, but, like, you know, uh, a certain network has, you know, I mean, you could use the, the talk show wars, for that matter. All three right. networks have a talk show on at 1130, and they're all basically the same kind of show. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's our opinion here at LaggingOut.com that the industry juggernauts are pushing players down a sci-fi path to their success, or quite possibly their demise. Yeah, How long will the science fiction craze last? We don't know. But what we do know is that <laughs> games are set in the past that are apparently out, and games set a thousand years in the future are in. <laughs> you can always so play GTA. By Shady. What, what does this all mean? Man. I mean, and, and no person. I would love to see a World War II game with the GTA engine. How awesome would that be? Fighting that? Air Cross, uh, a World War II game with the GTA uh, game engine, with the Rockstar GTA Five game engine. Do a World War II game with that. Why engine. haven't they done that yet? Because they're afraid. I, have no, they're I, funny guy. I don't know they're if they're afraid. afraid. They, risk. they don't have the balls. I mean, you can fly planes, helicopters. You could do Vietnam. You could tackle all different theaters uh, of past wars. I want to be and, general, general and them as you know, and you could even. I'll take it a step further. As talented as the creative team is uh, at that company, you could take it and through a war game create satire and a, and an anti-war message in a sense. I mean, you know, I don't know if they're into sending yeah, a message, but, 
but based on the satire that I observe in their games, there is sort of a, I guess maybe there's a hidden message in it. I don't know. I do know that it's satire, and I know that it's also homage to all the old, uh, you know, cops and robbers, I guess, and gangster movies and stuff like that. Why not do the same thing with a war game? I right. Mean, you know? It's an interesting I've, thing. I've been Why? shocked that they've never even Is tried. Zombie? What did you say, zombie? You know, thinking about it, do you feel kind of like they did the same thing with the whole zombies thing, though? Like, because it you was know, like zombies got beat to death. Everybody or... wanted to beat zombies for a real long time, and now suddenly zombies aren't popular. Well, there was anymore. all these all these zombie games coming out, which I'm not going to complain. However, right, but that's about killer. the time when 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 it started coming out with the Call of Duty. But it seems like now that I haven't seen that many zombie-based games lined up to come out, it's just like they're on the bandwagon again. It's the flavor of the month is what you're saying. You know, whatever the flavor the of the month is. Yeah. By the way, so, I'll be happy to uh, expand more on my How That World War II Rockstar. I'm easy to find. Lagging out at gmail.com. Attention, funny guy. I'll be happy to give you more on that. I, I think Actually, Titan when I came up with the idea, it was using the Red Dead uh, Redemption engine. Believe it or not. I think Titanfall actually was the biggest culprit of this. Um, putting like combining Halo type gaming with Call of Duty type gaming, and putting and marrying those two together. And now with Destiny coming out, it's actually taking it to a, a similar level that Titanfall is taking it as. So there's that combination now of that first-person shooter, sci-fi, but uh, semi-pseudo-science realistic type of shooter. You know, um, I think Titanfall actually kind of is trying to go to a different plateau and is actually taking a risk. And then... Uh, uh, Which is Microsoft very cool. It's a very cool game. Right. And it's not right. that we're, we're saying that that's, like, horrible, but stuff that... It's safe is what we're saying. It's a safe way, you know. It's you have what everybody else is doing. So let's right. give it to you. Right. All they need now is zombies and vampires in there, and I think they're set. So you know, and I do know that GTA Five is coming out for the Xbox One, and that proves to be something interesting too. Oh, you know, I know, that'll look nice. You know, there's a lot of games that are going cross-platform from the 360 to the Xbox One, and and stuff like that now because there's games. I think that people, you know, they know there's a community that'll follow it over. Because I have to be honest, there's nothing out right now that still makes me feel like i got to have an Xbox One. I don't even have that many people to play with on Xbox One. If well, I want to have, if I want to play with my friends, I'm going to check it on the 360. Yeah, I mean, it's like Call of Duty. I only got a copy for the Xbox One. Well, you guys are all on the 360 still, so, you know, but I can't justify to go buy two copies. You know, and and the new one will be coming out anyway. Uh, so. we're not worth a used copy for twenty bucks. <laughs> You're now with us, yeah, okay. I think it'd be a little more than twenty bucks right now, still, but no. Get that game for twenty bucks. They were had the uh, download. The season pass was forty percent off the other day. Oh, was it? Yes, it was. So, Lagging out, yeah, loot giveaway. Nice. Lagging Out Loot Giveaway! What is a Lagging Out Loot Giveaway? Well, our two viewers... Oh, guys, what is a Lagging Out Loot Giveaway? <laughs> They're going to find out right now. Tell me, tell me, tell me. Fantastic. Tell me. How do you win? Well, first you watch our show, which the two of them are doing. Uh, you watch it live, or you can watch it when it's on YouTube. Uh, and you wait for a trivia question to pop up on the Facebook page on the Facebook page entitled Lagging Out, and that's facebook.com slash lagging out. And if you're the first person to answer the question correctly, you will be entered uh, to win an end-of-the-season Lagging Out loot gamer gift package. Uh, also, if you watch our stream on Twitch, you can win stuff from time to time through Moabiti. But this, at the end of the year, we're going to be giving away a Game Informer signed by the entire uh, development team uh, on Evolve, uh, a pair of gamer gloves, an Xbox Live card worth 50 bucks, a signed South by Southwest autograph lanyard by myself and Chieftain, though why you would want that, I have no idea. Um, a bottle of lotion. Uh, we're giving away, we've got t-shirts, water bottles, you know, it's it's a pretty big prize package, folks. All right, last week's winner was, uh, the question was, what convention did Chieftain talk about last show? And it was Akon. And uh, our winner was Dan O. So a special shout out to Dan O. That's his second victory, by the way. 
It's his second victory. So he has two. So he's got two chances. He's got two chances now. That's right. You can get entered more than once. You just got to be quick, man. You got to follow our Facebook page. Okay, this one you're going to probably have to go back and watch some past episodes. See, that's the whole idea. The trivia question is designed to get that's you to right, watch That's right, buddy guy. They have to go to okay. the last show to figure we're out the trivia question. We're, we're using trickery. <laughs> we're using trickery. Using Jedi Ford. magic. We're using Jedi magic. Um, we're using that YouTube internet movie magic. Moa Beatty, our, our our typically our technical director, um, is, who's not here tonight, has a nickname other than Moabiti. Is it A, Scarecrow, B, Duke Nukem, C, Robin, or D, Shaggy? So go back, watch a couple of episodes, and when we post this question on our Facebook page, if you're the first person to answer, you'll get entered, entered into the Lagging Out Loot giveaway. And if you bookmark our Twitch page and watch uh, our Twitch channel, uh, you also have a chance to win free uh, Steam cards and all kinds of other T-shirts and all kinds of other stuff that Mobiti gives away as well. So I have I have uh, I have a mail stack here. I actually have letters from Twitter from, from Twitter for us. That actually has some. If you want to answer some, you want to answer some questions. It's not on the script. I just found it. That's why I ran off. This is from Courtney C. What was the strangest thing you've ever signed? Hmm. I don't know if that's directed towards you or me. Um, I mm -hmm. can answer that being a comic. Okay. <laughs> Shoot. I've signed. I've signed a few boobies. Okay. That's so not strange. I. I've signed. It I've is, signed but it boobies. isn't. I mean, I'm a uh, you know. Yeah, That's sign like it right thing here. I'm now. like you know, and I'm going. Are you gonna get a tattoo over that? Because it's who's that worthless autograph on your right boob? You know what I mean? It's. Some boob signed my boob. I was. Uh, I've been asked to sign stomachs, legs. You sign your full name, depending on the size, the cup size of the boob. Otherwise, you just put initials for small ones. Yeah, I just write my name. <laughs> yeah, it was an I odd get, request. I get the crickets for that one. I didn't mind. But. Next question. You don't want to know what I signed? You said a boob. I signed, actually, uh, when I was at Rooster Teeth, I signed an Xbox. Really? That was kind of cool. Oh, yeah, that's that kind of cool. cool. That's kind of cool, yeah. Uh, Christina G., what company was the best one you've ever worked at in the gaming industry? Mm. And I'm kind of this one too. That's, that's a tough one, right? No, the closest, the closest I can say is lagging out. So. Yeah. yeah. There you go. I like that answer. Yeah, I like man. that answer. <laughs> people, people actually come from other places, other podcasts to work for us. <laughs> so. With even us, if they're offered us. money, they stay here. <laughs> Yeah, we thank our team. They make they help make it happen. Our team we appreciate, makes us we appreciate the work. We really yeah, do. Yeah, definitely. And our future continues continues to be bright. That's why we wear shades. So that's right. Except for zombie, she forgot hers this week. Yeah, I did. <laughs> her her yeah, cheap prostitute cheap. glasses. Actually, it's my Kate Spades, and they weren't cheap. So I'd be like a politician here. Next question. Okay. What was the What was the What was your favorite What was your favorite uh, Did you Did you actually mention one funny guy or no? Uh, you know, man, they were all good. Uh, They're all good. I mean, you know, there's it depends. Yeah. I mean, this is supposed to be the dark side of gaming. Like, Take a risk. Wait, favorite. I mean, favorite were, I really did enjoy working at EA. They had a beautiful campus. Um, uh, there was a chef there. Uh, you oh, could go awesome. down to the cafeteria, and you would get a every day on break. I'd go down and I'd get a. a uh, egg, an egg, cheese, and sausage burrito. And a good and at lunch, you could go get a salad, and it was all reasonably priced. And you know, it was uh, you know, you'd go sit outside and eat, and or you could eat inside. I'd go sit outside usually. Oh, that's um, nice. You know, uh, I enjoyed I enjoyed their campus very much. And that was in uh, where Emeryville. Was, that was in uh, Playa Vista, California. Playa Vista, okay. I actually that the EA is number two on my list, believe it or not, of one of the best places to work. The best place I've ever worked, and if you ever watch on previous shows, it was Rooster Teeth. That's the greatest place I've ever worked. One I more. I like Activision a lot too. But I, you I, like I Activision? Like I heard I good like, things about them too. I liked a lot of the people I worked with. Um, uh, there are particular projects uh, I could say that would be maybe more favorable than some others, but. Uh, for the most part, I, I had a good time and always made a lot of friends. 
Time to read the sponsors. <laughs> Again? I thought we did that. Oh, we did it already? So I have to close it out? Didn't we do that already? I don't know. Maybe you two need to go. You it's so confused. Who knows what's going on? So we don't have to we already read the we already read the sponsors at the end? I read mine. I think oh, okay. We well, started to. <laughs> got cut <What>? off. <laughs> FU on posting it.com, the only social media outlet where you can post whatever you want without censorship. Check out FU on posting it.com today. Fierce Gaming Females. They support all gamers on all platforms. Like their Facebook page at Fierce Gaming Females or their group page at Fierce Gaming Females. They're hot chicks with sticks. Yeah! <laughs> yeah! Much better. Get- don't forget one of our uh, groups that we love to affiliate with, Xbox Boss Players, run by the one and only Blue Pola. Check out their group page today at Xbox Boss Players. And special thanks to our announcer, Griff. That'll make more sense when you watch the replay. Griff right. right. Dome! And then right a special thanks to our writing team, our newly assembled writing team. So good job, guys. Right thank on. you. On behalf of Zombie Killer, Funny Guy, and Lily Raven, we would like to thank you for watching the show. And until next time, this is Chieftain, lagging out. What? <laughs> Wait a minute. No, no, no. <laughs> Turn it off. Oh, I no, what happened to Game Over, man? What's, uh, what was that? I changed it. It sounds better. <laughs> no, it doesn't. I didn't like that. <laughs> I love it. No way. That doesn't even say that there. It says game over, man. See? I know. I know. I changed it when you You didn't change it. it. I put it out five minutes before the show. And I I changed it right in the middle of the show. See? Look, Look, folks, I'm not making it up. (laughs) (laughs) Supposed to say game over, man. (laughs) I think they all just quit. So I mean, they're all rage quit. Yeah, yeah. On behalf of Zombie Killer, Chieftain, Lily Raven, Moa Beatty, and myself here, Funny Guy, we want to thank you for watching Lagging Out tonight. Check us out on YouTube. Game over, man. <laughs> <laughs>